Good morning. So here we are in this new year of January 2022. And I want to share a message this morning to encourage all of us to keep moving ahead. <clears throat> but how do we go ahead? Every year, we hope that things will be different. And as the calendar turns to January of a new year, we are filled with hope that this year is somehow going to be different than the previous years. And that things are going to get or be better. <clears throat> but my brothers and sisters, God doesn't just make us better. In fact, he makes us new. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, scripture says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Now, that's absolutely clear. So no amount of changes we make are going to bring the results that compare to us actively seeking Jesus and allowing him to transform us. It is this pursuit, it is in pursuing Jesus that we are transformed. As we seek him, that seeking process and that seeking relationship, not that he is away from us, but that we are trying to seek him to grow deeper in our relationship with him. We want to increase our love for him. And it's in this relational seeking that he, by his spirit, by his word, by his grace, transforms us and keeps making us newer into his likeness, into his image. And so <clears throat> I want to encourage us that this year, let us pursue the change, not by merely making resolutions and goals, but even as we have those goals and we probably made those resolutions, and even if you don't have any resolution, but let us pursue lasting change by consistently drawing nearer to God. Now, we know the things that can stop us. Lack of focus, indiscipline, unconfessed or undealt sins that we keep carrying forward, or unresolved issues of various kinds, fear of man, or the dysfunctional mindset of seeking the approval of men, keep wanting to hear the praises of people, or just discouragement. But here's the amazing thing that from my own life, I have not really pursued dealing with any of these things specifically. All that I looked to the Lord for was his grace in order to keep drawing nearer to him. And beloved, I think that's the most transforming thing uh, <clears throat> and transforming experience that one can ever have. Because it is such a powerful experience and it's there's so many powerful dynamics at work when we begin to pursue the Lord. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And when we begin to pursue that, you know, there's a deep transformation that happens from the inside out. The grace of God actively begins to work in us and upon us and through us. So to make it very simple as to what to do, Shannon, in this new year. I want to share with you three things. Go, glow, and grow. I repeat, go, glow, and grow. Now, let me just elaborate these three things for us in a very simple way, as I said earlier, to encourage us. Number one, go. Go. Keep going. You know, it's important to not stop, beloved, but to keep moving in the right direction. As life happens and we go through different seasons of our soul and different seasons of life, your pace may change. There have been times in my life where I felt I was soaring and flying. There were time that I was sprinting and I felt no one, nothing could stop me. 
And at times it had to be a steady walk, you know, slower. As someone has said, if you cannot fly, run. If you cannot run, walk. But if you cannot walk, crawl. But keep moving. Keep moving because your good shepherd walks with you, beside you. You know, King David so beautifully wrote, right, in Psalm 23. In verse 1 and verse 4. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not be in need. Verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So beloved, I'm, I'm grateful that it doesn't say, I will fear no evil because I am with you. David was assured and confident in his journey of life because you, the Lord, are with me. And the Lord is faithful. And so I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to keep moving because the Lord walks with you. And it's also important to keep moving in the right direction. So what should be the direction you and I should be going? What should be driving us? What should be motivating us? What should be our singular focus? You know, last year I, I shared with you a story about, from the Bible about the, you know, the, the unnamed stranger, that man in, in Gadarenes who was demon-possessed by legions. And how this unnamed man was delivered by the Lord. And this unnamed man, after being delivered, his life was transformed. He wanted to do what naturally anyone would want to do in that situation. He wanted to follow Jesus. And as he decided to follow Jesus and he expressed that to the Lord, the Lord, did, Lord said something very interesting. He said, go, and I'll read that for you in Mark 5, 19. And he did not let him, what a thing. And he did not let him. But he said to him, go home to your people and report to them what great things the Lord has done for you. And how he had mercy on you. The Lord changed his direction. He wanted to go in the direction of following the Lord, wherever the Lord was going to go from then, from thenceforth. But Jesus shifted his direction. He says, you need to go to your home. You need to go to your people. And you need to report to them, testify of what great things the Lord has done for you. And how he had mercy on you. Tell them about me. Tell them your story transformation. And beloved, I believe that this verse is a prophetic verse for us in this new year. That there is a heightened emphasis from the Lord to go to your home, to go to your family and to share with them what great things God has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And I'm fully aware of how many times I keep repeating this. But beloved, this, can, this cannot be overstated. This is absolutely important. And I believe that as we go in this direction of wanting to tell our, beginning with our family, to our loved ones, our friends, our neighbors, as we go <coughs> in this direction, then we will even more experience the nearness of God. Not that he comes nearer, but we will experience his nearness. As he said in Matthew 28, when you go, lo, I am with you always to the ends of the earth. So I want to share this first thing. Go, beloved. Keep going. Keep moving. Don't let anything stop you. Not discouragement. Not the fear of man. Not indiscipline. You know, keep going. Keep going. And keep going in the right direction. Don't go in the wrong direction. So what is the direction when you make the gospel your direction? You want to go and tell what God has done for you. You shape your life. You orchestrate your life to fulfill his mandate. 
you will be moving in the right direction beloved you're headed in the right direction you will experience the nearness of the lord secondly as you go glow shine the light that god has put in you the life and the light of the lord inside of you we have no light of our own we have no life of our own it's what the lord has done for it's his presence in us it's his word in us it's his gospel in us it is his zoe life in us <clears throat> so if you keep trusting god and do good you will come through newer in christ you know beloved life is a test and a trust you know a few years back my farah shared a message about this in in one of our hindi churches life is a test and life is a trust and testing times will come but as you and i go through these testing times we have to keep trusting god to continue to do good in those testing times because testing times as painful as they are sometimes they will not remain and so god does some of his most precious and powerful work in testing times and if we are able to appropriate we make the good choice to appropriate his grace and do good we we will see what the lord wants us to see there's something mysterious and precious and powerful about responding to god in the right way especially in testing times psalm 37 verses 3 to verse 6 king david writes trust in the lord and do good live in the land and cultivate faithfulness delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart commit your way to the lord trust also in him and he will do it he will bring out your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday it is not possible to do good unless we trust in god beloved because a fallen human instinct to testings and trials to adversity is discouragement you want to give up and people begin to question what was the use of all the good i did is this how i'm being repaid back some of think that this is transactionary but it's not none of us are good of our own and none of us deserve good it is but the grace of god alone that he has shown us his goodness and he has redeemed us and saved us from our sins and given us and gifted us new life in him and so we must continue to trust in him who is lord over all who is lord over our lives who is lord over everything that is seen and unseen who works out all things for our good and above all for the glory of his name will not the judge of all the earth do what is right so we need to trust in the lord and appropriate his grace and appropriate his strength to do what is good and as you do that beloved you will glow your life the life of god in you will shine bright you know this is such a beautiful encouragement in galatians 6 verses 9 to verse 10 the apostle paul writes let's not become discouraged in doing good for in due time we will reap if we do not become weary so then while we have opportunity let's do good to all people and especially to those who are of the household of the faith well, i would only encourage you don't be discouraged keep doing what is good it's precious to the lord <clears throat> and in due time we will reap not just the harvest for this life but the life that is to come for all eternity as jesus said lay up for yourself treasures in heaven i want to encourage you to glow to sh- let your light shine so that they all may glorify the father looking at your life seeing the good works that he is bringing forth through your life by the power of his spirit thirdly keep growing oh yes you know as i moved into this new year a scripture that i had not read for some time was impressed on my heart and i want to read it for you it's from ephesians chapter 4 verses 22 to verse 20 22 to verse 24 and it says <clears throat> that in reference to your former way of life 
you are to rid yourselves of the old self, which has been corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit. And that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. You know, one of the first things uh, many of you would remember we were taught as we came to Jesus is put off the old, put on the new, put off the old, put on the new. And it's true. And I think what is crucial in this, in this whole transformation, in this whole shift of putting off the old self and putting on the new is being renewed in the spirit of your mind. We know that very famous known verse in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I believe it, this is a reminder for us. How do you grow in this new year? Be renewed in your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And beloved, that brings us to this, to the very important thing of our spiritual disciplines. Our time of prayer alone with the Lord, our time of worship, reading and studying and meditating, enjoying the word of God and allowing these three things, God to, you know, help you to draw near to him, abide in him, enjoy his presence, love him, worship him. And his spirit and his presence will transform you. So, beloved, it's important to have spiritual disciplines, these new habits. Also, reach out and serve people, beloved. You know, some of us have got so many apprehensions about serving and reaching out. You know, you know, how will I take care of my family if I, you know, start serving? How will I have time for myself? How will I manage my work? And, you know, there's already so much happening in my workplace. And my goodness, we, we, we block ourselves and we limit ourselves with these assumptions and these unjustified, illegal fears. His grace is sufficient for you. And in His grace, He will provide you with the wisdom, the strength, and all that you need in order to live a life that is, you know, that is faithful for all your roles and responsibilities and also to be fruitful. And I want to encourage you to step out, reach out, and serve, beloved. You know, some of us, a few people have been imploding. You're collapsing with discouragement and depression. Not because God is failing you, but because you're choosing a posture that is detrimental and harmful for your life. You are choosing to be like the Dead Sea that, that doesn't flow out. But if you choose to be like the sea of Galilee that receives and gives out, you will be a sea teeming with life. So beloved, I want to encourage you, every one of us, reach out, serve people, share the gospel, reach out to the needy. You know, give a, few, give a portion of your time, give a portion of your finances, give a portion of the joy and the peace that God has given you. Reach out to people. And so I want to encourage you, to keep trying and not give up. That's how we grow. See, when you and I cross the shore of this life, when we look back at life here on earth from eternity, we will look back at this little life that we had on earth. You would only wish that you had tried harder and not given up to pursue Jesus and to do the things that he commanded you and me to do. So I want to encourage you, reduce the possibility of that regret. Reduce the possibility of you looking back and saying, man, I wish I had tried a little more harder. I wish I had not given up. I wish I had not given up on those relationships. I wish I had not given up on, on doing that. I wish I had just asked God for grace to keep doing what was what I knew that he wanted me to do. And so I want to encourage you, beloved, to grow, grow in this new year. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Keep on to your spiritual disciplines. Reach out, serve people, and keep trying and don't give up. So three things I've shared with you this morning. Go, keep moving, and keep moving in the right direction. Go home to all, to, to your people, and go home and report to them what the Lord has done for you, the great things, and how he had mercy on you. Go because 
the shepherd goes with you. He walks beside you. Number two, glow. Keep trusting God and doing good. And he will bless you in due season. If you do not get discouraged, if you do not be, get weary in doing good and, and, and make the most of the opportunities that come your way, you will lay up for yourself treasures, not just on earth, but especially in heaven. Thirdly, grow. Don't give up. Keep trying. Keep pursuing the right spiritual disciplines and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Put off the old, put on the new. Let's keep pressing on, beloved. It's a new year. Thank God for new beginnings. Thank God for a new date. But merely a change in the digit doesn't change things. I think all of us are wise enough to understand that what changes things is making the right decisions. And the best decision you could make for yourself, and I could make for myself, if not anything else, is I want to pursue Jesus in this new year. I want to draw nearer to God. And then things will begin to come into place. The Lord bless you. I want to pray for you. Father, we want to thank you for this new year. And we thank you for this reminder that has come with this message <clears throat> that we ought to keep going because you walk with us, shepherd of my soul. I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I've made the choice to listen to your voice. Wherever you may lead, I will go. Help us to keep going. Help us to keep walking near beside you, Jesus. Help us to move in the right direction as you've commanded us to go into all the world and preach the good news. Help us to go into our world and preach the good news to the people in our home, in our neighborhood, in our workplaces, our friends. And as we go, help us to glow for you, Jesus. Shine through us, Jesus. Let your light shine. And when people appreciate, help us to point them towards you, Jesus, because it is you in us, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And as, as we keep going and glowing, help us to keep growing, God. In this new year, I want to grow. I want to see my brothers and sisters and Utsav as a community grow, growing into all good things in Christ Jesus, being renewed in the spirit of our minds by pursuing spiritual disciplines, by being a serving community, looking at the welfare of others, by seeking not just to be blessed, but to be a blessing and to keep trying and not give up. Thank you, God, for this new day. Thank you for this new week. It's been difficult for some of us, God, but I thank you that in all things, your grace is enough for us. May you be increasingly glorified in and through our lives. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.